Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 705. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about what is Warren Buffett doing? Because in times like this, you want to know, what is a master investor like Warren Buffett and his partner, Charlie Munger, what are they doing? What decisions are they making? But first, I want to share with you three reasons why I'm optimistic right now. Because I was having a talk with a friend of mine, and she said, are you still optimistic? Because things are looking terrible on television, no doubt about it. There's lots of bad employment numbers, as we talked about last time. But I also feel that, of course, those numbers were expected. We are in the chasm still. People need to go file unemployment. And so that doesn't really bother me very much. The question to me is, when is the economy going to open again? Because that is really what is going to affect the economy the most, is when can people start producing again? When can they go back to work? When can the economy start to function at a somewhat normal rate? Because it is going to take a bit of time to get back to 100% normal. It is going to essentially have to be phased in, I think. There's going to be some industries that are going to take much longer to come back than other industries. But there are some industries that are doing better right now, as we've talked about, specifically supplies and food and medicine. They're doing it much, much better. And many of these food companies are hiring in big numbers. So we know there's a positive side to this. We've also talked about the cannabis companies having enormously larger sales if they are in one of the states where they are named an essential business, because in some states, they are not, but in California, they are. So some companies have been able to have dramatically increased sales. But the reasons why I'm optimistic are because the market looks six months ahead. And I know that when we do go back to work and when the economy starts to get back to normal, money managers are going to look around and see some bargain prices out there. Now, we've already come up 20% plus off the bottom. So we were in the 19,000s on the Dow, and now we're at 22,000 on the Dow. And we were almost at 30,000 when this all started. So we still are significantly below the highs, but I really do think that we will have more of a W kind of a situation where maybe the market takes off here, we have another testing of the lows, maybe at the end of May or into June. And then from there, we can really start to build a firmer foundation and get back to things. Maybe not as normal because I do think things will be different, but I think a lot of things will return to be the strong companies that they were before. I think a lot of the market darlings will be the same ones that were before because a lot of them are technology companies that operate very well when you are operating from home. So I think we're going to find that some companies have been able to operate pretty darn well and their earnings didn't suffer as much as we think. So I'm optimistic because I know the market looks ahead six months. And while we're not through the chasm yet and we can't really start the timer for that six months, I kind of think some people are looking at these prices and saying maybe some of these companies have been oversold a bit and you could do some buying here. The second reason why I'm optimistic is because there's record bearishness right now. When we were near the top of the market, near 30,000 Dow, everybody was bullish. We had incredible bullish numbers. And now that we've come down significantly, there's a lot of people still bearish. So usually that's a good contrarian indicator. If a lot of people are bearish, it usually means the market's going to go up. And if a lot of people are bullish thinking the market's going to go up, well, it's about ready to go down. 
And the third reason I'm optimistic is I think if you take a three to five year view of your investments, where we are right now is going to be an incredible buying opportunity. To be able to buy about 22,000 on the Dow, even though the Dow is only made up of 30 stocks and Really, I tend to look more at the S&P 500. I'm just saying because we're all conditioned to talk about the Dow and think 30,000 Dow and all of that. I'm looking three to five years out and saying, even if the market averaged on the lower side, maybe a 7% return, every 10 years, the stock market would double. That would put us at 44,000 in 10 years. So I think if you are investing for retirement, which many people are, if you're investing in your 401k, which many people are, you have to keep that long-term perspective and really consider that this is a buying opportunity for the next three, five, 10 years or more. And if you have that kind of a time horizon, I wouldn't hesitate to be buying at least dollar cost averaging at this point and definitely taking advantage of these lower prices. Now, I wanted to tell you what Warren Buffett is doing because last week he made a significant move and it goes along with what I had been telling you because many people have asked me, should I be buying airlines? Should I be buying cruise ship companies? And I've really tried to say, If you're looking at investing, first of all, I recommend that you buy your asset allocation model, that you get your core together, your small cap, mid cap, large cap core holdings, and not worry so much about trying to pick stocks. And secondly, don't pick the stocks that are the most devastated because some of those are very devastated for a reason and it may take them years to rebound. So for example, recently Warren Buffett sold 13 million shares of Delta Airlines. That was 18% of his overall stake in Delta, which was worth $314 million in that sale. When you talk to the Delta CEO, he says the company is burning $60 million a day. And in the second quarter, he expects revenue to be down by 90%. Now, we're not surprised by a revenue number being down 90% because we are in the chasm. We are in a government-mandated shutdown economy. We understand that. But burning through $60 million a day is not sustainable. And even if they get a bailout from the government, well, it might take them a long time to get back to their usual levels of travel. This could be a longer term hold than perhaps Mr. Buffett wanted, which is what I suspect and why I think he may have sold was to take advantage of some other buying opportunities that he thinks might be selling at a deeper discount to their revenue stream and may not have been hurt as much in terms of their revenues as airlines have. Because Mr. Buffett also sold 2.3 million shares of Southwest Airlines. That was 4% of his stake worth $74 million. So there again, that tells me he's likely rotating out of some of his positions that he doesn't feel maybe he wants to have as much in and he'd rather look for other opportunities. And you can do that too. You can sell your companies or sell your investments that you don't think will rebound as well and buy quality right now that is on sale at a discount. Companies that will continue to have high earnings, companies that maybe weren't hurt as much in the closing of the economy because they were able to continue to work from home and continue to generate good revenues. So you can always upgrade your portfolio for quality. You can always add to your core holdings. In fact, one of my VIP experience members said she finally got her head out of the sand and reallocated to core holdings last year. And that increased her investment success by $150,000 because she wasn't so focused on trying to pick stocks, on trying to be in the high flyers. She got the basics of her portfolio from our asset allocation model and really focused on her core. And that made all the difference. 
So don't be like the person on Twitter who said they're not buying right now because they're waiting for the next dip. Well, we had the dip. And were they buying then? I don't know. But if you're waiting for the dip, I think that's a losing strategy. You want to be dollar cost averaging before it feels comfortable, while it's still scary, before the market bounces back. When is there less risk? When the market is down 32% or when the market is at all time highs? There is less risk when the market is down 32% because it's already down so much. The risk is when the market is at the all time highs. And that is where people get lulled into a sense of complacency and wanna buy at the top instead of buying when it's really uncomfortable and scary, which you have to do to be a contrarian. That's the way to invest, is when it doesn't feel comfortable, when it doesn't feel good, when you think, gosh, I don't know if we've found the bottom or not. If you've been following me, you know that I was buying at different points of maximum pessimism that I was seeing as the market went down. And I was buying before we reached the bottom. And I'm really glad I did because the market has rebounded so quickly that those positions are all in the positive. So you want to be able to buy without trying to get the absolute low because sometimes that low is so quick and then boom, you never see it again. And I'm not saying the low is in, I don't know whether it is or not. But what I know is for a three to five to 10 year investment period, you're gonna be looking at this chart and seeing this big dip here on the chart and saying, why didn't I buy? That was a great opportunity to get in. So in summary, keep your long-term perspective, do your dollar cost averaging, Don't wait to buy, buy and wait. Buy and wait with your investments for the long term because only when you are in the market can you benefit from being in the market. Really reinforce your core holdings and don't focus on the lack of quality. Focus on high quality. Quality at a discount is always a good formula for investing. And if this is a great time for you to consider the VIP experience, I am extending our special offer, which is a 50% savings right now and the lowest payments we've ever offered with no interest. I'm going to the 0% interest rate to match what the government interest rates are right now. So usually if you make payments, you are having to pay additional interest and I have reduced that so that you can make eight payments and have zero interest. If that's something you've been wanting to do and you'd like to come in, get our asset allocation model, you join the first year, you have no further payments after that, but you have lifetime access. If that's something you wanna do, fill out the short questionnaire in the show notes and we'll set up a time to talk. If you're interested in our wealth mentoring library, that is on my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. All of my podcasts are there and there's a search box in the upper right hand corner. You can search any topic you want and get up to speed on whatever you need to advance your financial freedom. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.